What's going on, Technology family? And welcome back to another episode of the Technology News Talk. I hope everybody is enjoying their, their Easter weekend. And uh, oh boy, we got some good, 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 good mainstream news for you guys today. And also a movie review, which I like to get started with that first because I'm excited to talk about this one. So um, let's not waste time. Let's get straight onto it with our, for, with our movie review. And that's going to be on... The Super Mario Brothers, and that was um, directed by uh, Aaron uh, Hawksworth and Michael J. from from, um, from Lumination, and of course it stars the voice uh, voice cast of Chris Pratt, Anna Taylor Joy, Charlie Day, Jack Black, Keen Michael uh, Keen Michael Key, Sarah Rogan, Frank Austin, Sebastian Ann, Charlie Chan, and Kevin Mike Kevin Michael Ritchie. So in this movie, it features the origin story. For the brothers uh, Mario and Luigi, an Italian American plumbers who are transported to an alternate world and became an entitled in a battle between the Mushroom Kingdom, led by Princess Peach, and the Carpas, led by Bowser. Man, let me tell you something. This, this right here, is how you do a Super Mario Brewery after that failed and horrible garbage. That was the, the, the live action Mario movie they had in 1993. Just put that shit in the trash. Oh my goodness. Uh, but um, but this one, this one is really good. So um, let me break it down for, for a second. So I like how they did the um the origin story for Mario and Luigi. Just like your regular entire American plumbers from, from Brooklyn. And um and I like how they did the story of like oh like they go into uh, this secret tunnel, and then and then you find themselves in the alternate world in um in a, in the Mushroom Kingdom. Now, normally in the video games where you see like oh like Mario has to to, to try and save uh, the, the Princess Peach, but in, in like this movie oh like he's trying to uh, um find and uh, and save his uh, his brother Luigi. Which he was uh, got captured for, uh, by, by Bowser, and uh, so that's how they um ch change it up a little bit. But um, and let me also say, this movie has a a lot, a lot of Easter eggs, and those Easter eggs will will, will take you back uh, all the way back to your childhood. And I was like, oh, I remember this, and I remember that. So uh, so yeah, it was a lot of good, a lot of good stuff uh, Easter eggs in here, and um. And uh, let me break it down and then uh, break down the characters real quick. Now, I know some people who are kind of mixed uh, when it comes to like to the to the voice cast choices, especially uh, with Chris Pratt and um, Charlie Day as Mario and Luigi uh, separately. But let me remind y'all. So, Chris Pratt, he did uh, he did voice Emmett in the uh, in the Le in the Lego Mark in the Lego movie series. So he has a ton of experience. So um, even though he kind of um, critically lied in the Italian accent, but he does have a good um, the, the Brooklyn accent. So um, which was okay. But uh, and but by, 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 by watching the whole movie uh, entirely, yeah, it, it totally worked out for him. So um, I, and I was totally fine with it. And I know a lot of people will say, oh um. I wish we had a um Italian accent actor to play Mario, which I do agree, but um but 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 it was okay. Chris Pratt did okay. He did really good. And also Charlie Day as Luigi, he did good good as well. So they can't take any away from from that as well. So Princess Peach. I love how they did Princess Peach in this movie. Instead of her having to be a freaking damsel distress uh, that, that type of character that we always see uh, in the video games, like they did uh, Princess Peach like really well. Like she, she was the princess of uh, uh, Mushroom Kingdom, and they show her origin story of how she became the princess. I like how she did that, and, and she even um, did a little uh, training for um, the, for for Mario. And I did uh, how they how they um, they did uh, Princess Peach really, really well. So um, that was really good, and. Um, but uh, but yeah, other uh, let me go to the other characters. Uh, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong. I love Donkey Kong, man. Especially of uh, the uh, they they did the rap, but um, the Donkey Kong rap, but they changed it up a little bit, which was fine, which was fine. 
and then uh, we saw a little cameo appearances from uh, from Diddy Kong and um, and Dixie Kong as well. We saw a little cameo appearance in there, and also uh, Cranky Kong. Well, what well, Cranky Kong had a, like a little minor appearances uh, uh, in the movie. So, uh, so yeah, we saw we saw that, and um, met, but man. The one voice actor that totally stole the show was Jack Black as Bowser. Oh my God! I feel like Jack Black had a real, real great time uh, playing Bowser. And there was this, and there was this one song in the movie. Uh, oh my God! Like this one song in the movie that that Bowser sing. Like that song. Let me tell y'all, that song is definitely gonna be stuck in your head once you see the movie and you see. Bowser played the song on the piano. Oh my goodness. That song is going to be in your head and you want to play that music over and over and over again. Like, that that, that was the... Uh, huh. Man, if you think um freaking We Don't Talk About Bruno in uh, uh, in Kanto movie was uh, was going to be stuck in your head, that that, that song where Bowser singing in this movie, that's going to be in your head. I, mean, I, I guarantee y'all. So, um... Uh, but yeah, um, there was um, not a lot of niggas, but but a little couple, uh, but but little niggas I want to talk about. But um, but they're not in a bad way. But um, it's just a way of a wish they could be fixed. Like for example, um, the runtime. Just how just how the good how good the uh the, the how good the movie was and how of a great time that we had it. I kind of feel like it kind of feels short to me. I wish it was kind of longer. And um, and speaking about uh, making it longer, I feel like the pacing was kind of a little um, off for me. Not that it was bad, but um, what I mean by the pacing, um, we did uh, we did see the origin uh, we did see the origins of uh, of each character. But I wish they could have um, like for example when um, uh, Mario and Todd introduce themselves uh, i wish they kind of introduced themselves a little bit more kind of like how we kind of get here like uh what but when they first meet each other in the movie and it was like okay we know what we have to do so let's go i wish they could have uh, expand that a little a little bit more so yeah yeah so i say the the, the pacing and the runtime should have been a, um a little bit longer but um but the, but the one time they had well, was okay because um, you're gonna enjoy it and then you're gonna have a real good good, good time with it, which was a uh, which was okay. That, that I'll get that uh, so much. But um, and a lot of people are saying, uh, is this movie better than uh, uh than the Sonic movies? Well, let me just say this. I definitely enjoyed the second Mario movie better than the first one. Not that the first one was bad. The first one was really good because the first one was mainly was the origin story of Sonic. And then when, when the second one came out, then you had Tails and then you had um, uh, Knuckles in it along with uh, Dr. Robotnik in there. And that's why I enjoyed the second one a little bit more. And uh, so I kind of um, put the, uh, the this is Super Mario movie uh, in the same... A level of excitement as the at the second second Mario movie. And now, I know Sonic is technically part of uh, uh, exclusive uh, when it comes to the uh, to the film rights. I uh, it's kind of um, it's with um, with Paramount, and I think it says Sega Gen Sega is also with Paramount. But um, and I know. We did detect the Pikachu, and that was from Wonder Brothers as well. But um, if Nintendo, along with um, Illumination, if they want to do a, um, a a a universe with um with Mario and other Nintendo characters, now if they're planning a sequel, but uh, to, to the Super Mario Brothers, um, I think the idea is that um, I don't want to um, yeah. Uh, spoil the uh, the two post credit scenes, but um, in the second one, I think uh, which I, I already talked about this before. I think the second one could be mainly focused on uh, Luigi's mansion uh, that they could they could do with that, and then um, they could also do a um a spinoff oh, uh, a spinoff Donkey Kong movie. They could do that, and um, so um, maybe we we could introduce Kirby in there. Um, 
I don't know how maybe Sane. I, I don't know what they gonna what they gonna do. Um, yeah, those those are just ideas of, 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 of what what they can do. And I know a lot of people say, "Oh, we gotta get Sonic. We gotta get Pikachu. We gotta get everybody in here so we can do the Super Smash Bros. movies." I'm like, "Hold on, calm down, everybody. They gotta get the rights. They gotta get the license for them and, and, and for for these properties in order to to, to 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 make that happen. So it's gonna take a while, but uh, but just uh, but just be patient. That's all. I, that's all I'm gonna say. But um, but yeah. Um, other than that, man." I get. I definitely give this movie an A. This is definitely enjoyable to watch, and uh, this is one of those movies that you would definitely have to buy the uh, the digital or Blu-ray or DVD of the version of the film. So, uh, yeah, and uh, this is uh, and definitely take your kids out to see this movie. And uh, if you've been a, a Nintendo fan for, from your childhood, this is definitely a movie you need to go see as well. But yeah. And that's our uh, movie review for uh, for y'all today. And then now let's get into our the main street topics for today. So, at the uh, incredible um, uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania weekend, um, just after uh, Re Re WrestleMania Night Two, um, they had an announcement that WWE and Endeavor's UFC. Will form a new 21 billion live sports and entertainment company because this is a both iconic and compelling brands. And this is uh, we had a um, uh, a statement coming from from Ariel Emanuel, who is the um, the head uh, master of the endeavor, and he said, and and I were and I and I quote, "This is a rare opportunity to create a global live sports." An entertainment peer play bill for where in the industry is headed. For decades, Vince and his team had demonstrated an incredible track record of invading and shareholder veil creation, and we are confident that Endeavor can deliver significant additional value for shareholders and bringing UFC and WWE together. We'll just have to see what um what the future holds. But uh, moving on, a live action Moana has been announced by Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, listen, I don't mind the live action of uh, Moana, but um, Moana hasn't been 10 years yet. I think this came out like, what, 2015? It's not even that long yet. But uh, it is what it is. But um, let's read um, uh, this statement here, Sam. Dizzy is set to sail with Moana once again, but this time in very, very live action. The studio has teamed with Dwayne Johnson to develop a live action remake of his 2016 anime music sensation. So yeah, it came out in 2016, not that long ago. But um, Johnson has plans to return as the role of Maui, a grandson demigod of the wind and sea. He will produce via his seven bus production Jared Bush, who had wrote the screenplay for the original movie, is back to write the remake. No director has been involved in this stage in development yet. Moana takes its inspiration from the Pauline myth as told the story of a young woman who disobeys her father, the chief of the island, that is dealing with the impensive echo disaster as the going off a quest to reunite the Mexico really with its owner, a goddess named Timmy Fee, along with the way she releases Maori from her from his island prison is captured by the monstrous craft and finds this and find the strength to, to become the chief uh, uh, her, her father believes she, she can be so I hope um, I do believe that the voice the voice the voice actress who played as Moana is definitely coming back soon as well so um, hopefully we get more details on the live action Moana movie all right, moving on. Painting 3 is going into production. So, Painting 1 and 2 director Paul King will not be returning to direct the uh, number 3, but it is putting uh, but it is putting the story together. So he is writing the script. To be directed by D Daniel Wilson will be making his feature film de Detroit debut. 
The first Pandemic movie made uh, two hundred eighty-two million on a fifty-five million dollar budget, scored a ninety-seven critical rating. Pandemic two made two hundred twenty-seven million and scored a ninety-nine critical rating. So, hope we get we we'll get more details on on painting uh, and painting three. And uh, going back uh, to the um, to the UFC and WWE merger company, so we got more and more details on that. Um, UFC and WWE to merge a new company that will control both brands. UFC owners endeavors will own fifty one percent of the new company, while WWE shareholders will hold the remaining forty nine percent. Endeavor CEO Ar Ariel Emanuel will continue to be the CEO. Of parent company and the new company. Vince McMahon will join the new company as executive chairman, but will not be will not be involved in creative. So that's our, our new details on that. And moving on. Theater giant Regal Cinema World made major process to get out of bankruptcy. So here's the details I got. Deals revealed that $4.5 billion in the company's executive debt through a debt for an intro swap raises $2.6 billion in a new character throughout an equal offering to the legacy uh, letters in new de debate financing. <clears throat> Current management stays in place. No sales of any assets is mentioned. Hmm. Man. Regal has been getting a lot of uh thing. I don't know what's going on there. Man. The status of the new Jumanji movie. Is it actually happening? Well, let's hear from one of our uh, uh Jumanji producers, um, him and Garcia. And he says Jumanji is definitely is going to be happening. Obviously, Jake Kirsten is directing Red One, the upcoming Prime Video holiday movie. So right now, he's working on that. But we have a tons of Jumanji conversations. We actually had a great take on what we're going to do with the next movie. So I know in talk with Jay, once he comes clear from Red One, there's going to be his, that's going to be his next priority for him. And that's something we definitely want to make. So, so yeah. Uh, so there, you heard it, folks. The Jumanji 4, it's... Wait, is it for yeah, Jumanji three? I, well, Jumanji three in this um reboot series, but technically Jumanji four. Okay, not to be uh, the the too confused. All right, uh, so yeah, so uh, the next Jumanji movie is definitely in the works, y'all. So uh, you heard it there. And then let's hear for what Kevin Hart had to say. We are going to have it do. We ha we're going to have to do it sooner. I talked to him the day uh, before yesterday. We're talking about it, of course. Another Jumanji. That has been the conversation. So, and then um, let's hear what uh, uh, Madison uh, Esman had to say. Nothing. If you hear anything, let me know. And Sony is on the line. Hey, guys, I mean, it's definitely, it would be a dream. The franchise changed my life, and I miss it dearly. And everyone who was a part of it. it is one of the greatest things that I ever that has ever happened to me. It's due to watch again. I think it's time. I would love to do another one any day. They can call me. So and you heard it there. So hopefully we get more details on the Net Jumanji movie. Alright, moving on. The Oscars are said to introduce the new rules. Sure to take off Netflix. So here's the current rule. Film must play theatrically for at least a week in six, um, uh, six market areas. That includes L.A., New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Miami, or Atlanta. And here's the uh, proposed change. Film must play in theaters in 15 or 20 of the top 50 markets in the United States. Well, I'm pretty sure Netflix can, go, can pull this off. And it depends on their which movie is their big budget movies. So, 
they they do have a uh, I think they still have a chance, but we'll see how that goes. Shazam two is is officially a box office disaster. So let's look at the numbers here. Here is for the first Shazam. For the first weekend, it made a uh, fifty three million. For the second weekend, it made uh, twenty four million, dropped by uh, fifty four percent. In the third weekend, it made uh, sixteen million. So in total box office, in uh, domestically, made three hundred and sixty six million. That's for the first Shazam. Now for the second one. In the first weekend, it made uh, thirty million. Second weekend made nine million. Dropped down to sixty nine percent. Third weekend made four point six million, and then total box office made one hundred and nineteen million currently. Man, that's not good. So, Sazam, y'all in trouble. Uh huh. All right, moving on to our next uh, topic is um, John Wick spinoff Ballerina is targeted for a summer day release. So, here's it from Deadline. The news came after the wake of John John Wick Chapter Four, racking up a growing gross of two hundred and fifty million, uh, taking the fourth pick franchise to over uh, eight hundred three, over eight hundred and thirty three million worldwide. Uh, currently, so far, Anna de Armas stars as the assassin trained in the tradition of the Roca Roma. With franchise uh, dramatic personnel Keanu Reeves, Anna Shishane, and Lance Reddick being back in addition to Ajay Huston, Gabriel Bryce, Catalina Sadine Morata, and Norman Red Reddick. Lean Wiseman directed Ballerina Off Shay's Shay, uh, Shane script and buys it as a, a Aaron Lee and John, and John Wick filmmaker Chad uh, Skitchy uh, producing as well. So. Definitely looking forward to the um to the Battle Ranger movie. I think it was targeted for uh, a July release uh, next year, I do believe. Yeah, but um, but in the end, still excited for it. And, uh, moving on, Bob Iger says Disney will license out content to other streamers. Hmm. Let's see what the, the, this has to. Let's see what this is explained about. Iger noted that having existed to many ten poles drove early demand of Disney Plus, which relates to 100 million subscribers just 16 months after its uh, November 2009 launch, 2019 launch. We are proud of our track record through we are recognized to have challenges ahead of the uh, U.S., namely to get a profanity, Iger said. We are, not we are not looking to license our core Marvel, Disney, Pixar, or Star Wars product to other third parties, we will continue consider on uh, on some of license and other products to, to third parties. So, as you guys already know, Disney is uh, paired with uh, Hulu and ESPN Plus, and then also for people who can't get Hulu in other like countries, well, they have um, Star as an alternative. You can watch some uh, stuff that's on Hulu on Disney Plus. So, I don't know. If this is good news or bad news, but we'll see how that goes from there. James Gunn taught Superman tone, superhero fatigues, and making movies after Endgame. So, we're going to be focused on Super Superman vs. Guardians. The writer and director recently took Rolling Stone that his Superman movie isn't going to feel like a Guardians movie. I learned so much from the making these movies. Gunn said about his Marvel franchise, but it's not like Superman is going to have an exact same vibe as Guardians movie. It's actually quite different. Of course it's going to be different because Guardians is different from Superman. And so, yeah. Of course. Yeah, moving on. The, G the WGA, which is known as the Writers Guild America, is set to strike Organization vote next week. Writers strike next month. So here are the details. The current WGA deal ends on March 1st. 
The WGA will hold a strike organization vote on, on April 17th. This vote gives the leadership of the WGA the organization to call for a strike. Two main concerns of the WGA were paid regarding stream, streaming shows and having few episodes, the studios play writers less and concern over the use of, of AI in writing process. The GGA, known as the Directors Guild of America, and the SAG, known as the SAG for, for, for the actors, deal, deal expires at the, at the end of June. Hmm. That's going to be interesting in the next uh, couple months. For, for, for these uh, union uh, union companies. Moving on, Game of Thrones is eyeing a eager Teleron prequel, theatrical movie and series. So this is coming for Variety. A feature film would then would lead into the potential series. Thus, plans remains in flux in, at at present. The show would entail the story of how eager. And her sister wives, Vera and Rias, used their army and their three dragons to conquer six of the seven kingdoms of Westward with the inception of Dwar. In doing so, Anger and I became the first kings of Westward, first to sit on the Iron Throne and the founder of Tangra Dynasty. Those events took approximately 300 years prior to the events of the first uh, Game of Thrones. Hmm, that's going to be very interesting. Moving on, the reboot of Harry Potter as one season per book series closed to a deal. Hmm, here are the details. Sources say the deal is closed. Each season will be based on one book. J.K. Rollins have created creative involvement with the series, but will not be the creator or the showrunner. The series will be for an HBO match uh, 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 exclusive. The original Harry Potter movie came out almost 22 years ago on November 14, 2001. Hmm. That's going to be very interesting. I hope they do um, uh, each season where uh, which the movies did not focus on any uh, uh, for, for what I was saying like any book that has not done a, a movie on should be focused on in the series. So that's my um, objective there. Moving on. The Joker 2 finished, this, uh, finished production uh, this week and releases pick of Lady Gaga as Holly Quinn. So let's look at the um, the numbers from the from the first movie. So the first one made um, $1.7 billion in the box office. Won two Oscars, which includes Best Actor for <clears throat> well, Joaquin Phoenix and Best Music as well. It was also nominated for uh, for other 11 Oscar categories, including Best Picture, to Best Director, Best Screenplay, Best Cinematography, Costume Design, Makeup and Hairstyling, Editing, Sound Mixing, and Sound Editing. Mm -hmm. So... 2024, can't wait for Joker 2. So, we still got more news as it returns to the uh, John of the Majors uh, issue, so we have more details here. There was a video evidence proving that the allegation was false, in case y'all uh, uh, didn't know that. But, um, but there is a witness testifying from the driver's proof that the allegation is false. There were two other witnesses proved that the allegation was false. The women in question reacted to the allegations. All proof will be presented to the DA, except all charges will be dropped. So like I said before, this is just another Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case all over again. So I don't need to go through that. You guys already saw that through social media and all that other stuff. So let's move on from that. Deadpool's Miranda Baker explains why she may not be in Deadpool 3. Well, I have two opinions on that. But uh, let's read what, what, it, what it says. What's up with Deadpool 3? There's really a good question. 
I have been very diplomatic about what I say here. I like to be in it. They have called me about being in it. Right now, we are not agreeing on terms, and everybody is trying their best and doing their best, but it may not be working out. I don't know. Now, if you guys remember in Deadpool 2, um, she did this. she did die in, in the second one, but like, well, when they got to the end credits, uh, that Deadpool went to another another universe to try to uh, and save her again. But um, I don't know when they go to Deadpool three, are they going to go back to the um to the original universe? Like, I don't, we still don't know yet. I, I want her to re uh, to return for Deadpool three, but I don't know. What's that? I'd wait and see. Donald Glover confirms that Lando returns talks are happening. And this is what uh, Donald Glover had to say. i love to play Lando again. It was a fun time to be him. We are talking about it uh, again. You only get this in, uh, you, you, you only get, you only get so much. So I'm not interested in doing anything just that's just going to be a waste of uh, my time or just a paycheck. I would much rather spend time with people that I enjoy. So it's just going to be the right thing and which I think it could be. Lando is definitely somebody I like to hang out with. So I would say do a, a separate movie or show that focuses on Lando. That's it. That's all y'all can do. So, moving on, Apple could buy Disney, says the report. Hmm, let's read what this says. 55% of Disney's consumers that are not good users are just ones uh, spending money that are under 18. To put this in further perspective, in a $400 billion annual market for smartphones, every 1%, you could move that needle in your direction, which is for four billion a year, and that's just from the phone sales, not not to say uh, all that worth four billion a year. That is just from phone sales, and nothing to all the downstream e was for bringing people into your ecosystem. If you could move that need of five percent, that is twenty billion a year. You could pay for a dizzy in half a decade. That. That that all that alone, hmm. I don't know. Hopefully, we get more details on that. Five Nights at Freddy is set to open in uh, in October uh, in theaters and on Peacock. So we got the uh, uh, details on that. It will be directed by Emma Thompson, who directed the 2018 film The Wind. It's written by Scott Contador. Who wrote most of the the Five Nights at Freddy's video game, and also be written by Seth Kutcherback. His only feature film written was uh, Man, Man, Manito, was in uh, uh, 2014, and it will star uh, Elizabeth Hale from You and Gossip Girl, Josh Hatchbridge from Hunger Games, and Matt Litter from Scream and Scooby Doo. So, here's a question. Would you guys be seeing this in theaters, or would you uh, uh, watch this on Peacock, or would or you would we rather do both, watch this in theaters and watch it again on Peacock? So, let me know in the comments. Frank Gagler left Marvel for DC over how MCU's handle uh, Crossbones. So this is what Frank Gagler has to say. They never told a story about crossbones, Gabor said. The mythology of the MCU is just what Marvel has its pool of characters. It's so deep. Crossbones was there for a minute. Of course, yeah, he was there for a minute in, uh, in Civil War. But he was supposed to be there longer. Then they went the direction they did. I think crossbones serves a purpose. But I think it's interesting thing is that if you see how many people around the world will respond to crossbows, and again, he is on screen for a freaking short amount of time. There is more than that. I think there are more uh, meat on the bone. I was disappointed. 
which is why I went over to DC. So, the question is, which character he's going to be playing over at DC? We don't know yet. So, hold on, only time will tell. Moving on. Charlie Cost confirmed that Daredevil is set to the pre uh, premiere on another Marvel property before Daredevil Borns Again series. So, but the question is, where will we show up at? So, we got Secret Invasions. We got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. We got Locus, Loki Season 2. We got the Marvels. We got X-Men 97. We got What If Season 2. We got Echo. We got Ironheart. Then we got uh, Athena, Agatha, Covert of Chaos. And, and, then, and then we got Daredevil Born, Born Again. So, I have no idea where Daredevil goes short again. Uh, my obvious choice would definitely have to be What If Season 2. That's my only thought. Maybe he might show up at Secret Invasion. I don't know. But we'll just have to wait and see. Red Dead Redemption movie could be as good as Last of Us, says Jack Black. So, here's a statement here. Speaking with BPC on the topic of video game adaptions, Black mentions HBO's The Last of Us is as fantastic an example of a perfect adaptation, praising how loyal is the original source material. Black then go on to explain that he believes that there are plenty other video games he would like to see explored further as a movie or television show in the future. Speaking of pointing out to Red Dead Redemption as a potential candidate, do is this great story. Now, I can definitely see this being a series for Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption. Um, I feel like the movie will probably be too short for the way it is, so I think the series will be its best bet for Red Dead Redemption in my book. Moving on, the Mandalorian movie was announced to, to end the Din and Grugu story. So, this is coming from the, the latest news from, from Star Wars Celebration. Jane's Mangold movie will go back to the Dawn of, Jedi, Dawn of the Jedi, while David Finley's will focus on the New Republic and close out in the incarnated stories told in Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and other Disney Plus series. Shimmy uh, Ogabad Kimmy's film is set, will be set after the events of Rise of Skywalker and will feature David Ridley back as Rey as she builds the new uh, the Jedi Order. So, we got some uh, uh, some good news out of coming out of the Star Wars celebration, but that one of the, the, the only stories. That's, uh, but let's continue on with, the, with, with Daisy Ridley. So, the Star Wars movie future just came at the, in a, into sharp focus. Daisy Lee's Ray will be the center of the first Star Wars feature film since uh, 2019's The Rise of Skywalker. Lucasfilm president Kaylee Kennedy announced that at Star Wars Celebration in London on Friday, Sherman Olkabin from, from Miss Marvel will direct from a script by Stephen Knight from Peely Blinders. The film will follow the events of, of Rise of Skywalker and will focus on Rey as she builds the, the, the new Jedi Order. So, that's going to be um, that, that very, very interesting uh, how they're going to do the, uh, the new story there. And continue, uh, continue on. Oh, wait. Uh, we got one more James Gunn news before we uh, uh, go, go back to the, um, the, to the Star Wars news. But um, Jane Gunn said that a Marvel and DC crossover movie is being discussed. So, in their latest issue, uh, uh, and this is coming from Deadline, Empire quote, that Glenn is taking on matches will be definitely maybe. I am certain they are more likely now that I am in charge at DC. Gunn told the magazine, who knows, however, that in many years throughout, I think we have established that we are doing at DC first. I will be lying saying that we haven't discussed it, but all discussions have been very, very light and fun for him. So, I say it's going to be a, um, a long, long time before we get a Marvel and DC crossover. So, that's all I'm saying. So, and uh, going back to, um, to, to, to more Star Wars news, 
Logan director James Mugger to write and direct uh, Star Wars, The Dawn of Jedi. So, the rap caught up with Mangold, Mangold to uncover some new details on the project, in which he revealed he will also write the film with an all-new uh, set of characters. He said he'd been working on the project for a couple of months under the codename Star Wars Zero, as the film will entail the original of the Force and the First Jedi. The main goal also adds the fans should not expect this to be a Star Wars film for the Star Ages, despite it said to be set far for the past. So, we can all make predictions. It's probably going to be based on the uh, a Night of the Old Republic, but um, but we'll see from there. And then uh, lastly, um, he also said, uh, during the uh, the showcase panel, Lucasfilm revealed several new eras. Uh, Mango's film will take place during the dawn of, uh, of the Jedi era, which takes place uh, 25,000 years before the New Hope. Lucasfilm president Kid Kenny Kenny described as a biblical epic. So... That's gonna be very interesting, but um, but that's all all the news I have for you guys today. Uh, let me know in the comment section below uh, what are your thoughts and opinions on everything I discussed uh, today. And um, if you're watching me on, on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell where new episodes are, and new videos are uploaded. And of course, if you're listening to me through, on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or any other platform. Uh, platform uh, streamers don't forget to follow me there as well but um, other than that this is Trico and I'm signing off y'all peace